where you block and then counter. Um, I've learned several techniques over the years that I've improved on that so that not only are you blocking, you're also attacking at the exact same time. So that the opponent in 99.9% .9 of the cases is focused solely on their attack and are not focused on defending themselves. Okay? So what you're taking advantage of is when their initial attack takes place is you have the ability to attack to defend their attack and then attack them back when they're not defended. Okay, so we'll start out, I have about three or four techniques, I'm not because we only have an hour and a half. So we're just going to focus on doing it on the right side, then we'll do it on the left side so you get both sides. And you'll understand, because when I teach my students, I want them to be able to do the jujitsu techniques. And the only way to do that is you can't get hit and knocked out first. So if you get hit and knocked out, you can't do your own defenses. So I'm going to teach you how not to get hit most of the time. Even, even Ollie, who's great, broke, got his jaw broke once when he was screwing around with Morton. Um, so anyway, without further ado, who wants to start? Steve, you feel up to it? Good. Okay. okay, so the, the very first one, what we want to do is we're going to work on focusing on the, uh, a boxer right now. Typical street fighter, kind of. And most of them are right-handed, so they're going to be in this position. And almost invariably, when they start out in a fight, is they're going to start throwing left jabs most of the time, more to determine distance before they come across with a right cross or a roundhouse or some other attack. Okay. Now, if you if you watch YouTube, you're going to see a lot of attacks just like this, and most people simply don't know how to defend against it, and it's so easy to defend against if you're trained for it. So. What I teach my students first is just have a natural, comfortable stance and not be rigid. You have to be able to flow and move. But a lot of people sit there and they'll put their hands like this, and they're not blocking the upper quadrants of any of the attacks. And so they get themselves off balance because then they have to adjust their body to, to block. So what I teach them is just have a natural, bring your hands up naturally, even with your shoulders, so that it forces your eyes to focus on the inside. We're not concerned on the outside because I'll, I'll address that in just a minute. But if they just bring their hands up and they're in a nice comfortable stance like this, anything that comes on the inside of this, you attack it. Okay? So as Steve throws a, as a straight jab, you see the angle as it's coming in. I see it coming in and instead of doing this and turning or doing this and turning my hips, I simply attack it by coming straight into the joint and back out, like this. As it comes out, I simply hit it and come back. So I'm not trying to, I'm not changing my dis position to him. I simply, I see it come out, I palm strike it. And I'm palm striking the forearm to the elbow, okay? Now in class, I'm just kind of pushing it away, but in a real fight, I'm gonna actually hit him with a real strong palm strike right there. And you hit someone there about two, three times, they stop throwing the punch because their hand starts to get numb. Okay? So all I'm trying to do here is I don't get I don't want to get hit. So he throws that jab, I palm strike, and notice I move away from his strong hand. So as soon as that palm comes in, I move on. And then I can come in behind him by coming in this way, so which will bring to it. So what I want you to do is practice this. I don't want you to practice blocking. I don't want to see any blocks this way. I want to see a palm strike. Now, the focus is as it's coming out, you only have to touch it here and palm strike it maybe two inches here and it misses your face. And I see a lot of instructors teach this. It's a waste of energy. If, it, if it's here, I don't have to worry about it because it isn't going to hit me. It's off there somewhere, okay? So don't spend a lot of time, even, even if you did this block, this is as far as you need to go because it's not going to hit me. So don't do this and overcorrect, then you have to bring yourself back. Same thing here, he throws a right cross. It's here, palm strike. So your lead hand just simply palm strikes it. 
And the same thing applies. It's coming here. Notice, I pushed about maybe three inches. It misses my face. That's all you have to do. Okay, so what I would, questions? No. Okay, so what I want you to do is just focus and practice them. Just do the jabs, you know, just slow motion right now until you get it. But I, I want you to focus on the, full, the hand here. If you're in this box, it turns and strikes. Now notice my strike is effectively striking towards his face, and anything in front of it is going to get hit. Okay, so if, you, if they ask, so he throws it to, the, to my abdomen. Oh, sorry. Just same, same defense, it's just in a downward motion. He's, he's lower, I just hit him. Again, it's coming in toward my abdomen. If I strike downward, it's not going to hit me. Okay, and I come right back. Then I'm just ready. Very little effort to do this. Now, where I learned this technique, I, I modified it. Where I learned this technique is Muhammad Ali. If you watch his fights, he does this exact technique. That's why he never got hit in the face. He was always dancing with his hands and doing this, and the people would throw the jacks, and he would just come up. Instead of from up here and out, he was coming from underneath and up. And he would block, he would just block him. That's all he was doing. And that's why he never got hit, almost never got hit, because he would just simply deflect in the force with very little effort. That's why his fight, the fights, if you notice his early fights when he was really right on top of his game, he would just dominate them because these people were wasting energy trying to hit him and he was just dancing around them. Okay, okay so grab a partner. Try to teach yourself. I mean, once you get better, you can move your hands down. But I will, if, you, if you teach your students to focus here, you're not going to get hit because it forces your eyes to see the force coming at you. Okay, so grab someone your size. This one I found is very effective. So when that person throws that left jab, oh, sorry. <laughs> when he throws that left jab, I palm strike this way so that it deflects her. I step in behind and strike her right here. So notice my hands are block and strike right at the same time. So it's boom. Sorry. Okay, and by pushing, striking, and hitting right here, it's going to knock her right off her center and she'll go straight back. You know how to fall. Good thing. Okay, so when you're in a, in, a, in a fight situation and you've deflected a couple times and I'm moving off, right like that, straight across. Okay? Anybody want to see? But you want to practice that one? Yes. Okay. So let's just practice it. Just practice the 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 box. The boxer starts in with the jabs you, a couple of times, and then you slide right in and strike him, just from up above. You don't have when when you bring this left hand. Don't step in this way because now you're stuck. You're on the inside of him. You want to be here with him pushed. So see how he turned his body. Now he's completely off balance. So if I'm striking, it's going to knock him off his feet. And if I don't, if I just come in like this and pull in, then I can do a nerve attack right here, which you guys know about. And you can control it. Jared had his arm up here. So when I came across, he was blocking the, the punch, which is good because he's well trained. So if someone ha had caught this strike and blocked it, you still have the advantage because you, you've got him turned the leg comes out. Okay? So if someone had that arm up, which Jared did, you, if he blocked it, boom, you've got him already because he's off balance. You just kicked the knee out and he still goes down. Okay? On the right cross, let's turn around this way. We'll try to do it for the cameras as well. Okay, he throws the right cross, step with the left, not this way. Okay, you want to step with the left. Notice this leg is back, so I'm, I'm pushing him over, and I hit him this way. Now, this knee starts to crumble as I hit and come down. Most people, when they throw that right cross, don't have this up to block because they're countering. They're getting ready to come with the punch. So he throws the right cross, this left hand is coming back down to strike with, not having it up to block. So it's here, boom, and now 
is going to come down. Okay? Okay, so always step to the outside of this. Okay, so now let's switch gears a little bit. Let's go into continuing with Oh, Also, everybody knows Osotagari. That's a judo throw, where you, it's an outside sweeping throw. But what we're, in jiu-jitsu, you don't have time to sweep. You, you don't actually have to sweep somebody. You can take them down just with upper body force. And so we're in the same situation, but instead of a jab this time, Thomas is just he's so mad, he just comes flying into me with that wild, crazy kill motion, which if you look at YouTube, it's a very common street attack. They just get so welled up, they just want to knock you out. Okay? So, when he does that, we're going to look at the, the energy of his body first. So he's coming in here like this, and he's cocking the left hand to hit me the second time. This one is like this. This is the attack. So as that's coming around, you notice where his body is. His body is completely off balance this way and this way. The basic judo. Okay? So what I do is you have to go through the force at the same angle. So if you do that, it's strictly physics. And watch what happens to his body when I step into it like this. It stops completely. Now, I've turned him that way, and because he was cocking the left hand, he was completely unfocused on his face. It's wide open. So as I step in, not only do I block, boom, I punch at the same time. Okay? So the, the typical counter is punch, counter, punch, counter. That's what every, all the boxers are taught. But in this motion, he's going to come in, boom. Now, if I really hit Thomas in this motion, when I block his upper body and hit him right there, his head is completely back. I don't need to sweep this leg out because he's going to go down. But if he doesn't go down from here, all I have to do is push right here and push him over because he doesn't have support on that front leg. It's, it's, it, he's in this position. Okay? So what I want you to practice in slow motion until you get the, this up is the key to this motion is push off the back leg and drive through him at the same, para, be parallel to his chest as he's rotating because he's turning, his shoulder is rotating with the punch. So you want to be dead parallel to that as you go through him, boom, just like that, as you step through. And if you do that, it's all physics, he's simply going to stop and go backwards, okay? Obviously, don't hit your opponent straight in the draw when they're because you're going to knock them out. Most of the time, most people can't take a straight shot when they're walking in full blast and you hit them full blast. That's a very powerful punch. And in these... Um, I guess these cage fighting things. I saw the fastest knockout I've ever seen this exact technique. Guy walked in, this guy came right through him like that, he went right down, it's over. Just to say this exact same technique I'm teaching you. So it does work in real life if it's done correctly. Okay, and that is, this person is completely unaware that you're gonna hit them. They're focused solely on their attack, okay? Okay, so the same attack is coming, but instead I didn't feel like hitting him high, I wanted to hit him low and throw him this way. Because all of his buddies are right behind and I don't want to go into his buddies. So I want to throw him this way and then keep running that way. Okay, so the momentum in judo, as you know, you have to off balance your opponent and fight with them. And I don't know if anybody knows this guy from. Uh, Follow the Olympics. This guy from Mongolia won the gold. Mm. That nobody thought he would do anything, and all of a sudden he beat everybody. Um, so here's the same attack. Go ahead. But instead of hitting high, we're going to hit him low. And the way I do it, because he's coming to me, I don't need to pull him or step in. I don't block his force. I simply turn my body so that I'm ready. I block here. I just have my hand up so that it rotates. And this comes out and strikes at the same time. So I block and punch at the same time. So as it comes in, I block and punch. I grab. And notice my position on my feet. I didn't step in here 
I turned in front of him. That's the goal. Here, and then I simply turn and I'm right in position. Okay, all this momentum is coming right to me. So I don't need to fight with him and struggle to pull him off. He's coming at me. Okay? So the key here is not, and I see a lot of the beginning students do this. Go ahead. They step in and stop his momentum, and then they have to regenerate that energy. All I do is if you watch, I simply turn around in front of me. And I add my hands up. Go ahead. One, two, like that. Okay, just let him come to you. Okay, any questions? Okay, so we did the, this move right here, upper, upper blocks. The down block is this way, boom, or boom. Okay, and the reason I'm stepping in is I want to protect my groin. So if they're throwing a kick, oh, okay. okay, I'm down blocking and driving straight through but I'm blocking and punching at the same time, okay? This one, you have to be forceful. You have to drive into them. Because in a kick, you either get out of the range or get into the center. So if you see them going to kick, boom. I come down to cover in a rent, in a, just a standard down block, but it, boom, I come straight out into the nose or under the chin, depending on how tall he is. If he's smaller than me, I might hit him in the forehead, which I don't know. <laughs> Okay, so right foot snap kick or a thrust kick, if I see that coming, boom, I'm going to just drive through them. Just down walk and drive through. Okay, left snap kick, same thing. Down walk, punch. Drive in and just hit. But you got it. the key is to push off the back leg on here. I see the kick coming, boom. I have to drive right into it. Okay? Any questions? Okay, so the kick, start with the jab. This one is also an alternate defense for the jab. As, we, as I showed you before, we're blocking here and deflecting and it misses me, so I don't care. The alternate one is this. Now he's cocking, when he throws that jab, that right hand is cocking back to hit me to do a one-two. Okay, so this technique, was, I've seen, this is a Bruce Lee technique that I watched him do a lot. And all he did was he deflected and smashed. It was a block and, and continued attack. So, and, and by doing that is when you turn here, that right hand's about to come out, but when you hit him, it, it blocks the punch and it hits him square in the face. Okay, notice I drove off the back leg as well. But again, all I'm doing, deflecting that just enough so it misses me and goes straight down the arm. You push off the back leg, okay? That, I only learned that one just watching Bruce Lee do it, because that was one of his signature moves. And it's a very effective street, actual fight. I and mean, in a real fight, boom, you just literally go right through the person. Okay? So that's an alternative for people that are looking. Um, like I said, in a dojo, we, look, we learn uh, hand through, Kodi Gaeshi, whatever you, whatever you want to call it. Very static position. Tiger comes up, he grabs you, the hand, and then you learn. Hand throw. So if I come, if I if I come up to the grab you, you yeah, okay, all right, and he jumps into the hand throw. All right. However, someone who's committed, they don't just come up and put their hand on you. Okay, what's he doing? I said, oh, well, that's real nice material. <laughs> that's no, that's not what he's doing. He's going to grab. Okay, he's going to grab, and this is going to be this is going to be stiff, and you don't know whether this is coming up for a strike or what. But this is going to be stiff. It's going to be pulling you into to him. Um, so just as I'm here and pull this hand off, it's not going to work. All right. So what you need to do is immediately. First of all, I'm worried about that that hand right there. But I need to immediately do something that's going to change his way of thinking. Right? So instead of just coming out here and trying to get this hand and take it off, because that's not going to work. So what I need to do is when I get this hand, I'm not just coming out here and coming for this hand to get it off. What I need to do is I need to bring my forearm under, underneath, so over the top like a lot of if you were doing. You come under and you simply push. Okay. Now the hand 
for his body that is going to be more pliable to use. So as, as long as he's grabbing here, he's thinking grip, power, strength, move me around. Right? As soon as I can make him move and he feels himself falling forward, his brain has got to shift to, oh, i got to catch my balance or I'm going to fall. So you put, immediately put him into a defensive mode that is like, oh, I don't want to fall down. So now he's got to think. And as soon as you make him think, you, you've, you begin to gain control of the situation. So all we're going to do on the hand throw is as you come in, you're going to get out of the way of this, so you're going to move over here to the side, forearm to forearm, and you, you drive the forearm into his arm. Make him move. Now, and whatever submission you're doing at the end. Are you trying to hyperextend the elbow? Huh? Are you trying to hyperextend the elbow? Wait, with that? It, too, it, it feels like it. It looks wants to. <laughs> yeah. You come under. Okay. You come underneath. It all depends on his arm. Remember, remember what he's, well, look what he's doing. Oh, right. So he's coming in and out. So it just depends on when I catch him. If I catch him with the arm out, then yeah, it's going to hyperextend and it's going to push his head forward that way. However, if I catch him when it's in here, when I push, now watch what happens. Yeah. Okay. So either way, it's either if the arm is straight, it's going to be an elbow lock. If the arm is bent, it's going to be a shoulder lock. Either way, he begins to lose his balance. And immediately, he stops thinking about this grip and starts thinking, oh, i got to get back on my feet. And while he's thinking about getting on his feet, you're already moving in for this, whether the hand comes off or not. Okay? And the biggest problem most people have is they come in here and they think this is to get the hand off. Oh, his hand's not coming off. That's not, I don't care if his hand comes off. That's not the point. The point is to move him. Okay? And I don't care if it comes off or not. Usually it will because he's going to forget about the grip. And then it will just pop right off. And then I can put my hand through. Okay, so the one thing, the one thing we're going to concentrate on is everybody knows hand throw. All right? That's not the that's not the point. The point is that immediate move that's going to take his balance so that we switch him out of attack mode and switch him back into defense mode. And that's how you gain control of the situation. Okay? So it's very important. You get here you move to the outside, okay? move to the outside where you can really drive this forearm into his arm and drive and make him move. If you make him move, you've already started to gain control of the situation. Okay? So it's there was a partner try a drive. And typically, what does everybody learn for a rear bear hug? Okay. Stomp that foot. Now, oh, I just don't want to say yeah, Don't damage. I, I will. <laughs> okay. All right. Oh, I'm going to actually take it back. But, right, everybody knows. And that's how you learn it. Okay. Stomp that foot. Step out. Grab that leg. And pull it up. Okay. All right. So, you're, you're good. You're on the right track. Is what? Immediately do what? Create pain. Okay. Now, let's turn this one. But, how can we make this better to make sure that um, this, is, this technique is going to work? Okay? We want to create pain, yes, but we also want to affect his balance. The biggest problem I see in this technique is they're not, we're not affecting his balance. Okay? When we strike and step out, that's how I have, he's still got a grip on here, and I've got to reach for this leg down here. Right? Here's one little thing that we're going to change on this. Make this technique work. Okay, when you stomp, do not simply step out and go for that leg. When you stomp, step back. Okay, you step back, and what you're doing by stepping back, you created the pain, and you step back. You're using your butt to affect his hip and his balance. Okay, so you stomp and you step back. See, I didn't even have to go for the leg and he went down, all right? Because as soon as you affect his balance, 
the brain switches back to, oh, I gotta protect myself, I gotta protect myself from that fall. All right, so from here, okay, stomp, step back, get the leg, and you're gonna find this technique is so much easier to do. And you got any number of submissions that you can come in to and, and do. All right, so stomp, don't step out, stomp, step back. And you're gonna find sometimes you don't even have to get the leg before it drops. Okay. So, okay. Uh, let's see. What was my attack on here? Okay. Just a rate, just just a punch. Okay. Now remember, this guy's gonna be coming at you. He wants to take your your head off. Now we're gonna have a little bit different philosophy on the the the, the blockings and things like that. What he was teaching, what I what he was teaching is great. Uh, but I consider that you know, that's advanced. Stuff you really have to know your movements. You have to be confident with your movements uh, to do something like that. So it's great for a class of, of black belts. That's not something that I would personally teach to white and yellow belts. Um, most important thing when somebody's trying to hit you is not trying to get the hands up and block. Is move the target. So when he's punching, I, I'm going to get out of the way. Strike. He's punching. Okay. I, I'm going to move out of the way of the, of the, um, of the strike, okay? Um, in a punch coming in, I want to move out and I want to protect myself. This is what we call a cover. You're just coming in here and covering so that you're basically moving to the outside here. Right? Now you've got an arm to work with. Now, basic technique, most people are taught, is elbow roll into an elbow lock. Takedown, okay? Cover. As I said, if this guy is still in kill mode, as soon as you get this arm, he's not going. As soon as you grab it, his initial reaction is to want to pull back. And as soon as he does, um, he's taking your leverage away from that arm. So you need to understand it. That's going to be his natural reaction. So you want to use that. So instead of I'm in here and take, trying to force him this way when he wants to go back is you want to go in the way that he wants to go. So what we're going to do is still go. I still want to do an elbow lock. I still want to do a, uh, a lock on this elbow. But what I'm going to do is we use an action um, visual aids. Everybody, everybody knows the movement you make. If you have a towel you think you got something on the towel. How do you how do you get the junk out of the towel? You whip it, you snap it, okay? So that's what you that's the exact same action you're gonna use on his arm. So instead of just coming here and fighting this, you're gonna you're gonna whip it just like a towel. Okay? So the key on this one is as you come in here. You're going to push his elbow towards his ear. You're going to push that up. So you know, see how it affected his balance? Come in here. And now I'm going to pull this arm back into uh, an elbow lock takedown. Now, if you do this fast and you do this hard, pop. That elbow's going to, <laughs> that elbow's going to dislocate right there. So you may not have an elbow. Oh, an elbow lock submission on it. You may have to go into something else. But that's what it is. You're going to whip it. It's up and back down. Okay? Push the elbow towards the ear and then whip it back down. Okay? Got it? Push. Push first. Push it into the. Okay? All right. Someone, again, a real determined opponent. They get into you quick. quick. They come in and they get this head. They pull this head down and they're getting ready to. Give you some knees. Alright? So, how you deal with the situation like that? Okay? Um, anybody have any ideas of what technique you want, might use for that? Well, one of the things that I would use with that is I tend to use a straight, straight piston type punch with the gang and swing into the thigh. As the knee comes up, I'm constantly pistoning them right in the yeah. thigh. Okay? The soft That's muscle. Good. Yeah, that, that's one way, but I would prefer not to have those knees come up at all. Okay, so here's what I'm here's here's what I'm talking about. 
Um, the thing is, people think that, oh my God, this is, this is a devastating hold and technique. Well, the reality is, it's not a hold at all. He punches your head and he pulls it down. I mean, you just step out of it. It's, a, it's, a, it's the easiest thing in the world to get out of. So why are people, why do people just get, uh, well, why do people panic when they get into this? Because they know what's coming, those knees. And the last thing you want to do is bring your head down at the same time a knee's coming up. That's just not a good situation to be in. So they're kind of paralyzed in that position. Now, so what is what do we, we want to prevent? We want to prevent the knees. Yeah, you could hit the knee or try to stop the knee. I don't want them to ever take even start the knee. Okay, so one of the simplest things that you can do when he comes in, it's just hands in here and his hips and push back. He can't knee while he's trying to walk back. Okay, if you just do this hard enough, you're out. Of it. You're out of it. Okay, so if all you want to do is get him away from you and don't get knee, then you need him. You need him walking backwards. Can't do, do two again. things at the same time. All right. Can you do that again? Okay. Yeah. Just for a simple, put both hands at the hips and push. That's the simplest thing. Okay. And then decide which way I'm going to go. All right. So we'll turn this one just a little bit so everybody can see. So all I'm going to do is when he brings this down, I'm going to push just enough to make him take a step back. All right. Now when he takes a step back, now I know which way I want to go because number one. Here, even if he does try to knee me, there's not going to be any. See, I can stop this here. Okay, try to knee me with that. <laughs> he can't do it. He can't knee me with the forward leg with the slightest bit of pressure on it. So his only choice is to use the use the back leg to generate any power in the knee strike. So I want to immediately move away from that. So focus on the forward leg. As soon as he steps back. Okay, as soon as he steps back, focus on the forward leg. Okay, and that's the side I want to go to. So this is here. And now I can now I can duck out of this because I'm not worried about the knee. So I'm going here. Even if he tries to knee me, he's gonna miss. Alright? All I'm going to do is here, I'm gonna push slightly into the hip to keep this leg down. Alright? And then my free hand is gonna to come to the inside, inside of the leg and Okay, and take it down. All right. So let's turn this way so you can see. This one here. Come to the hood. This one comes inside here. I hook and take him over. All right. So always go to the forward leg. This time, consciously step back with the right. Okay. So here. No, step back with the right. Okay. okay, I move. Now this is the board. That's the one I want. I don't want to go for the same leg every time. I always go for the forward leg. Okay. And here, here, and down. Okay, leg take down from a head clutch. Okay, everybody got that? Go to the forward leg. It comes inside. I hook. Rotate. Don't try to lift the leg. Just simply rotate it. Oh, use your. Everybody's on her. Everybody knows uh, Koshikuruma from over here. Now, it's the same technique for a, a, a roundhouse kick. It's the same technique. All right. Same technique. You're just doing it from a head clench instead of a roundhouse kick. All right. Okay, try that on me. Ah. And then it comes right up. Is it is like that? Like, yeah. Okay. yeah. So, yeah, drive, drive into the side of that knee to make it buckle. And it pops right up. Okay? That's, so, try that one or two more times about how you can do it. I can, just so I can uh, go ahead and start formulating my plan, my evil plan. Um, there, I can determine which way it goes. Back. Like I said, when he pulls the head down, and I just push, I don't know whether he's going to step back with the left or right. And I just have to, I just have to see it and pick the one that that's that's forward. Okay. 
There is a way that I can determine which foot it's going to be. Okay, when he pulls the head down, okay, instead of just pushing, I strike in here and it turns in that way. So if I strike, if I strike with the right, I'm going to get the left foot. I strike with the left, I'm going to get the other one. So when I hit him, I already know which leg I'm going for because I know which way, which leg's going to step back. So. You know, that's something you can practice and work on later, but just in learning the technique and understanding that you always want to go for the forward leg. You won't be able to reach the back leg anyway. I'll take the shoulder lock, I'll take the, come down, get the arm, fold it back, and take him down. That's the way you're taught to do shoulder lock takedown. Okay? Reality is, here, Again, against a committed opponent. Here, as soon as you hear that, he's going to start fighting back against you. All right? You've got to take that away from him immediately. Okay? So, you come in here. Make sure you go, you slide down here. You need to work on getting this grip so you can do it in your sleep. So you can come in and use your seat grip, come down and get the, get the grip on the hand. It's just something about jujitsu that you really need to work on and practice and learn how to get that every time. All right, so instead of just coming in here, pulling the arm back, what I want to do is immediately get the grip and rotate the hand in. Look at his face, okay? All right, and as soon as I do that, now, now I do my shoulder lock and there's no stopping it, okay? So all we're doing is we're, do we're just basically doing two techniques at once, okay? What is... What is that? Rotating it in. So I'm doing wrist lock as well as shoulder lock. Now, in here, in here, once you get this to about right here, you want to let it slip, okay? Because on the street right about here, it's going to snap, all right? You'll never even get the shoulder lock in. But the key to this one is Hover, immediately get your grip and twist. Now look at his position. Now all I have to do is this hand just slips over, set my back, and he's down. Could you, okay? do, uh, could you please do that one more time through and explain the, the, the letting the wrist go? And if I'm just okay. Over uh, here, just this angle. Either. Yeah. Okay. Move out. Cover out of the way. Immediately get your C grip on the hand and rotate it up. Okay. Now this hand just slips over as you sit here. Triangle lock. And you loosen the grip. But in class, as you teach it to, to protect the K, when you let the wrist slip? Oh, when you, uh, as, as soon as you feel him mm -hmm. drop back, okay? You, you're all experienced enough. You felt enough, you know when this is locked up. And you know when you're taking it too far, all right? So you should be, you know, you should have done this long enough to know that you're going to feel it right about here. It can't go any further. All right? That's the expression in the guy's right. face. Right. So when you feel it lock up, you don't want to take it anymore. There you want it to start to slip. But you, you, at that point, you've already done, you've done your job with it because all you're trying to get is that. You're and you've done your job. You've set him up for the, the shoulder lock takedown. And that's really all you need. You don't need to go ahead and snap this right here. You can wait till you get to the ground and snap it. All right, you just want him down and under control. Okay, so immediately set your wrist lock, just crank it in, and then you're going to notice he becomes uh, in perfect position to just finish up with your shoulder lock takedown. Okay. When I see a, a punch coming in, straight, right, yeah, straight, right, right, straight punch. Okay. My brain says move, but sometimes it's not real specific. So I go, it may, first time it may tell me, oh, move, move left, okay? I do it, do it oh, move right. So some, when, a, when an attack is fast, you just gotta move. You don't have time to stop and think, move left or move right. You just gotta move. So that's why we teach jujitsu techniques that you can go to the outside. You got plenty of jujitsu techniques you can use on the outside, or you, you move to the inside. And you have plenty of jujitsu techniques that you can use from the out from the inside. So.
don't worry, don't worry about that. You, you, first rule is to protect yourself. And then worry, then look at, okay, where am I? Am I on the left or right? Okay, what technique am I going to use since I'm here? All right, and that's the way you got to think of it. Um, you can't sit there and this guy's yelling at you and you, you're sitting there thinking, okay, well, if he throws it much, I'm going to move left and I'm going to do a, yeah, by that time you've already gotten hit six or seven times, okay? So, yeah, if he punches and I move left, then yeah, I've got that technique I can use for my shoulder lock. But I, I like shoulder locks, so, since the Kirby was saying yesterday, um, you, the parent joints, the parent joints, you get much more control over the entire body. Out here with fingers, I got no control over his body. Wrist, I get a little bit more control. Elbow, I get more control. But once I get up here and and control the shoulder, I'm controlling basically his entire upper body because this is directly attached to the, the spinal column here. All right, so uh, that's why I prefer shoulder lock. If I can go right into a shoulder lock, I'm much more comfortable that I'm actually controlling this person. So I like shoulder locks, even for submissions, which we'll work on uh, tomorrow. Okay. Uh, and Mark's earlier says he was talking about moving and striking uh, at the same time to immediately take this person off balance. And that's basically what he was teaching. It's the same thing, the same, same philosophy. There's no difference there. He was saying there's more than one way to do it. Where when you punch here and he came out and struck immediately strike, well yeah, you can do it that down. Yeah. yeah. Um, you can, you can do it that way, but there's more than one way to affect it. So if he's really coming at you, that foot's going to come forward, and um, his body's really, come, is really coming at you. So what's happening is this body is turning in towards you this way. And if you can uh, affect his balance by going back, he's going to go down real very easily. Okay. So instead of a blocking strike with a hand, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna strike with the body. All right? You have, the whole point is you need to widen your realm of thinking, how you strike. You don't just strike with the arms, you don't just strike with the legs. You can strike with your entire body. Okay? So, when he comes in, I'm going to move to protect myself from this. Okay? And then, as I move in, instead of here, I'm simply going to come in this. Just hit with, my, hit with my shoulder. Just drive my shoulder. He, he, Okay. Same thing. All right. Now, if I really want to knock him down, that's fine. That's all I need to do is move in and, and drive the shoulder in and down he goes. But notice what? I lost control. I had nothing there to work with. So if he gets a chance to come get up, he's coming at me again. So I don't want to hit him as hard as I can. I just want to affect his balance. So when he comes in, I'm going to come in. This is going to come in here. I still did it too well. <laughs> sometimes it's hard to do. Sometimes it's hard to do. Okay. But what I want is the shoulder on. So I'm not going to hit you real, real hard there. So I'm going to move out here. And this shoulder just bumps in as this comes up. As if we're going to do the same hip throw that he taught. Okay. But I'm going to do a shoulder lock instead of a hip throw. So this one down here. Here. Well, this comes in behind. And, okay. And you're going to find that there's no resistance to that shoulder lock because he's already on his way down. So from this side, take him down with the shoulder lock. Okay? So uh, just so you can see, take it this way. Okay? Here, go ahead and step forward. Here, okay? as I come in and bump, this one's coming up behind. And as he begins to fall, this just falls over and I've got him down with the shoulder lock. Okay? So most of the work is done with your shoulder, and then you're going right into a shoulder lock with him. Okay? Anybody need to see that again? It's really very, very simple. Just make sure that that arm's coming up behind his as you bump him with the shoulder. Okay? All right, try that one. Again, you can't really be sure how this person is going to move. Uh, he may take that big roundhouse punch in here, and now my, it becomes very obvious which direction I want to take him. Here, I want to take him you know, off his balance, so I want to take him that way. But if he doesn't take that big step, 
here, here, here. And I end up here. Well, now, look, yeah. if I bump into him, I'm going right into his base there. He's not going anywhere. Okay? So, if I come in here, and I see when, when he moves, that foot doesn't move, then I want to do something else. I need to do something else to affect that balance. So I need to do something that's very quick, very, very effective to begin. But either create pain or affect his balance, preferably both. So from here, when I move out here, I'll trap this, but I, I see the, the feet, and all I'm going to do is boom, just a hammer strike right into the temple. Boom. Okay? And lock on that and turn it down. Uh, Tayotoshin and take him down. So from this side, um, this side, and drop throw and take him down. So anything I can do that quickly, immediately creates pain, uh, puts him on the defensive, is going to make him easy to take down because punch here. And I just want to do my nice Tayotoshin. Guess what? As soon as I start, well, he's going to start to pull back, and now we're locked in here, and it's not going to work. So I got to strike. Now, now I drop into my throw, and he goes right down. So you need to eliminate that resistance immediately by creating pain. So it's pretty it? obvious. I think everybody can see that. Could you do that one more time? Huh? Could you do that one more time? Okay. Close. Camera striking and follow through. Bam and grab on. Step in, drop in. And you got your drop throw. Or you could go into a hip throw, whatever you like. Okay, uh, this particular uh, in jujitsu, we name our attacks as well as our uh, throws, just so we really know what we're talking about. And again, I'm talking about a committed attacker, something that's going to happen on the street, something that people hear and talk a lot about. Um, so it's called a sucker punch. Mm -hmm. Now most people have a certain idea about what a sucker punch is. And yeah, basically somebody just comes up, you're not suspecting anything, and just bam, punch you in the face. That's what most people consider a sucker punch. And yeah, you could look at it that way. You guys are black belt belt in jiu-jitsu. You should have known already, somebody who you don't trust starts coming up to you yelling whatever, that you just don't stand there with your hands down. So anybody that's had more than a week of jiu-jitsu should never get sucker punched. As soon as I start coming up, you, you better drop into your stance and start protecting yourself. You should never get you know, sucker punched. At well, least not range, yeah. at least not from the front. Okay, so in here we don't call this a sucker punch. This is just a punch, all right? A real sucker punch is one you don't expect and you don't see coming. If he's in front of you, you should see it coming. But if some, you're just standing there having a conversation with your friend or something, this person comes up behind you, you don't see it coming. If he comes up here, grabs your shoulder, spins you around, and then... Okay, so for us, that's what we call a sucker punch, all right? It's from behind. He spins you around and then punches you in the face, okay? So if, let's see, when you feel somebody jerk you or would you jerk you around, you can immediately those hands need to, you, as soon as something pulls on your shoulder, you know something's up. So this should be an immediate reaction as these hands come up to protect, okay? Now you got a immediate, yeah. Yeah, I could possibly, if, if I knew what this was all about, um, then yeah, I could just simply turn around and bam, strike right into the face. However, you know, if you're at the family picnic and this is Aunt Martha that says, oh, I haven't seen you in ages, you yeah. know, and you come around and you knock her false teeth out, you're not you, yeah, you kind of ruin the, the mood of the party. All right. So you got to understand that just to haul off and strike somebody is not always your first option. So what you need to do is protect first, figure out what's going on, and then and then act. Okay. So what all I'm going to do here when I get spun around, immediately the hands come up to protect. All right. Then all I have to do is this hand is just simply going to continue, drop over the top, 
This one's going to drive into the shoulder and shoulder guard into um, uh, an arm bar. Okay, let's try it on this side. Okay, he spins it, spins you around. This one arm. Don't don't try to set the arm bar yet. Just hold this in. Okay, push on the shoulder and reach over. And now you've got your you're right into your armor, and it's that fast. Okay, one more time. Just let me see. Okay. You might need to see that again. Do it from the other side one more time. Uh, from this way. Uh, from, from the other side. Yeah. From this side. Okay. That's the match. Um, you can try every judo throw you know, but unless you are an Olympian, you're not going to get any judo throw in here because every time you start to move, he's going to count with another movement. You're just you're just in you're just grappling. That's all it is. You're never going to get anywhere that way. Okay, so you got to revert to okay. What are my jujitsu tools that I can use? All right. Again, going back to the head clinch, always want to work towards the forward, to, towards the forward leg. All right. So <clears throat> when I get into it, uh, whether he pushes me and we end up in this position, and he ends up with um, right leg forward, or he, he comes up with left leg, it doesn't matter. You don't want to switch your hand position. You don't want to change your position anyway, based on where his foot position is. You always want to go to the forward leg, all right? Now, if I want to come in here, just, just relax, or am I going to relax? Just relax. What I want is my seonagi, okay? Is here, morote seonagi in judo, but here, the clinch uh, here, then I'm coming in, like a hip up, coming in underneath, drop, lift, and throw, okay? Like I said, that's never going to work. What do, what do I, what's going to happen if I just, if I'm actually able to get in position, and I try to do my lift and throw, what's his, what's he gonna do? He, he drops down and he prevents me from doing it. I need him coming up. I need him coming up. So how am I gonna get him? Sorry. I'm my, my other one broke and so this is like 30 second intervals. So then once it runs out of 30 seconds, you click that. Okay, let's go black. Okay. So I need him coming up. But what, I, what, what can I possibly do? To get this guy coming up, all right. Well, to get him coming up, I want him going down first. Again, affect his balance, create pain, and now you gain control of the situation. So, if like I said, if I just turn, he's going to drop. Okay, I want him coming up. So, what I want to do is go ahead and get this. In. What I want to do is I want to make him drop first, and then make him want to come up. So from here. Here, I do that. He's going to want to come up. Okay? So, I play a little psychology here. I'm not trying to break his knee. I'm not trying to take him down. All I'm trying to do is affect his balance. So he goes down. He goes, oh, I don't like this. I need to get back up. All right? So, you make him do what you want him to do. You make him come up. So it does go ahead and put this this foot forward from here. I said, come in here. Make him want to come up. And I got my same line. If it's the other foot, it doesn't matter. The other foot's forward. Here, make him want to come up. And I've got my same line. Okay, so all it is is just a kick. Um, just put the right foot forward. If it's the right foot, this one's got to come in, so you'll do a, a circular kick Bam. into here. If it's the other foot, you do a push kick into the knee. That's the only difference. Right legs forward, right legs forward, circular kick. One foot's on, push kick. And then you simply step in for your same amount. As he's starting to come back up to regain his balance, you're already doing your loop into your you're saying not me. Okay? Try that a few more times and then we'll show the woman. And you teach the kids the escape maneuvers. And you teach them to yell. And what do you teach them to yell? What word? Police. Help. 
fire, fire, fire. See, that one's for adults too. It doesn't scare them off, like, oh, if I come help, will I get in trouble too? Will I get hurt? <laughs> yeah, people don't want to get involved. Um, same thing if you're running down the street and you're on fire, it's like, oh, shoot, this is my property, my car, look, I'll go, go look. Um, another thing we probably don't discuss is our friends and our family uh, saying, hey, so what if? You know, we're going on vacation, we're going to Venice Beach, oh boy, we're going to walk through the neighborhood and, you know, we're through homies town and his turf and stuff like that. And what do we, you know, what would we do? Would we fight? Would we run? Would we have a code word? You know, things like that you could discuss with uh, people you're with. I asked, I was talking to my wife and I said, what would you rather do, run or fight? And she said, I'd run. So oh, good, because then I know what you're thinking and you know what I'm thinking. But if me and Aaron were out, hanging out, we'd probably say, gee, I think we'd like to throw in a couple blows and then, then take off. So we have a different mindset. And I was reading this book where the guy was with the girlfriend who wanted to see him fight. So she purposely got into a confrontation with a few people. Mm -hmm. He wanted to run. Mm -hmm. She wanted to see him fight. I've, I've known a couple. I've known a couple like that. Yeah. Or did you? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so what do we teach? as jiu-jitsu uh, martial arts for people to do for a confrontation? Well, if you can, the situation to begin with right. and remove yourself from the situation before it comes down to a physical confrontation, if at all possible. Right, we teach them to, to leave mm -hmm. and then we even teach them to run, mm -hmm. but we never tell them how okay. or what to do or what to look for. Where to run, how to The yeah. maneuvers and okay. things of that sort, so that's what we're going to touch on today. Uh, first thing, what necessary? When you know, go this direction, yes. where are you going to go? I'd rather not have two fellows uh, on either side of me, so I, I, I might rather be by, by the wall, so I at least have a wall behind me. Okay, and what wall would you pick? That solid wall. Okay, mm -hmm. let's say they're both solid walls. Oh, um, just because this eye is better, I'll probably come over here because I, <laughs> I can see better with this eye. Okay. Uh, any that's other me. comments? Me. Yeah, I would. I would. For me, for me, I gotta make a quick choice. Okay. And and yeah, I'm gonna go one one side or the other. I'm first gonna look here, and I'm like, well, Thomas, he's a little a little smaller than these two guys, mm -hmm. but. See that right there? I'm going to, something I could fall over. This one's more open. But is, so this, a, is this a wall? Are we, are we no, well, there's nothing there. No, no, I'm just, I, I see obstacles there. Okay. If I go, I'm going to fall over that. Okay. So even though I would prefer to maybe go for the little guy, <laughs> right. I, I, I got to go that way because I don't want to fall over that. Okay. So you're both correct to, to hug a wall. I would rather hug a right side wall, and I, did you see what I did? I want you to pay real close attention. Down you can see something I did wrong. You're swinging your arms. I don't know, does that mean anything? <laughs> got it. Okay. The reason I picked the right side, I'll be facing the left arm. Uh, the right maybe arm. the weaker side. Yeah. Okay. If I face this side, I'll be facing the strong arms. Most people are right-handed. Okay. And you caught the other one. Now, why wouldn't you want to try to single one of them out, not run at them, but maybe you know, tell them how hot his grandmother is. See if you can get that <laughs> step forward and hit him in the throat. Well, they will. They will. They will anyway. Because. Yeah. What what are you going to do when you I start mean, seeing that coming out? Oh, you're okay. you're going to start you're going to start trying to close them off. Yeah. So you probably he probably yeah. will. You, you've you already picked your okay. guy because that's where you're going to go. So he he, 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 he already he, knows he's going to have to take care of you. That's why that's why, again that's why he's okay. saying pick that. Uh, another thing you you got it right. If I'm running like this, grab my hand. Okay. So this is the drill. Don't do it that fast. All right. Just go through. A little slower. <laughs> <laughs> you can treat that. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm going to be 
getting everybody to, uh, <laughs> to get through. You know? Okay, this Great. is our, our first tech meeting. First technique, that's you. I'm running through here. And okay. All right. Yep. So okay. Because spring. someone will always grab you. Here. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. I'll put your elbow up. That's exactly Over. what happened. That's yeah. exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I think we can be careful enough if we go slow. Okay. But I'll cover up just the same. <laughs> you may want to put like a guard. Yeah, exactly. That's okay. exactly what I did. I was saying about using a focus mitt, but we might <laughs> go like that or oops, get a little more I've done that. excited. So try try a couple of times real real slow. And, uh, okay. Sure. And once you go through, take it in. Alright. And then you come. You come over here. You go over there and I come on the line, right? Right? Yes. Yeah. You can try to go. Can you move there? I can go away now? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, cool. oh, that's I get a chance now. Whee! You just don't try to keep fights dirty. That's not. That's a nice to me. Yes, you can get popped. Okay, come on then. Our rotation got confusing. Well, and look, they're ganging up. Everybody, everybody, everyone had, everybody, everybody wants to Everyone had a chance. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, in multiple attackers, there's several rules. I'm looking for the number one rule: multiple attackers. Shooting your knife. No. Pull your gun. Disable one person. Assault one. Try to find lead lead guy. Disable one. Get in between. Huh? Like. Okay. Now you do the Aaron Center over here. You close in. Okay. I come in. Okay. Now you do this. You close in. Okay. I come in. Okay. I do this. He grabs and I come in. So nicely. Okay. <laughs> We're just gonna stand back. Okay, it looks it looks really beautiful, but I am gonna get kicked. Uh, in your own dojos and in your own systems of jujitsu, you can come up with techniques. But consider this: three seconds is great. Two seconds is a lot better. So what we're going to do with, um, we're going to work with your uki. We're going to mirror the person. I'm not in, at a position where I'm so far away. This is another thing. If I'm close, guys are closing in. I want to be in a position where I cannot be sucker punched without seeing it. I want to be in a position where I can immediately grab, okay? These are um, attacking techniques. Okay. Uh, first technique, you're going to do a slide step, grab, pull on the throat. Okay. You can swing him, and his buddies are laughing their head <laughs> Sucker. <laughs> so, real slow, I'm going to stand with my right foot forward because I want my strong side facing his. Weak side, which is the left arm. That you the left arm. Yeah. Okay. You're also I'm going to do. The other guys too. I want to make my space about arm's distance where I can grab, and then slide one foot in, go right in between his feet, his center. It, we've experimented, and I could use a T-shirt. Okay. What's wrong with this? It doesn't it break just your legs up. There's no push and pull going on. He backs up. He may go like that. Okay, but he's still baked. Okay. This, maybe not a curry throw, but he's way off base and balance. And the technique is one, two. Two, two seconds. You're 
Following the question. Thanks so nice to him. Yeah. What's this? Just go on, go on with the, 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 That's the, another thing I want to talk about. <laughs> if <clears throat> that R <clears throat> cross the I R <clears throat> I get away, I call the cops. And they for some reason stick around. Because like, he's wailing and going, ah, my eyes, yeah. my eyes. You get and who's the witness? Yeah, buddies. Yeah. Right. Yeah. This, 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 is, this is humiliating. <laughs> okay? <laughs> this will put you in prison. So you have to consider. Because yeah. we're, we're going to say, oh, he didn't do anything. This guy just he walked just up. He just walked up to him. So uh, work with partners uh, three times each. Practice real slow. The entrance has to be a nice flow, like a skip. Mm. Yeah. Don't bob up and down. Try to keep it level. You want your right in between them. You want to really upset this position. Okay. Okay. Uh, I was reading this thing about guns, and they have these levels: but yellow, course, orange, red, right. black. Black, I'm going to kill you. Red, I'm going to say stop and then shoot. Hopefully not kill you. Yellow, I have my hand off the trigger. I have my weapon. It's kind of like the same with martial arts. We have to assess the situation. Maybe I shouldn't use homes. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the baseball team is chasing you. How big of a threat are they? How much do you want to defend yourself? Okay, if I'm running and I got my football team chasing me, what's, and here's the street alley, what's wrong with this scenario? I'm not running fast enough. <laughs> where, where are you running to? I'm running to my home or whatever. So you have a destination in mind. Okay, I'm running. Down the middle of the street. What's wrong with that? Well, the traffic, they can get on both sides of you. Um, okay. All right, run against a wall. Run by a wall. That's got good. it. Cover your back. Or your side of that regard. If I'm running and I have guys chasing me, my vision has to go here and here. I have to cover a lot. Right. Area. Plus, they could come up on both sides of you. Okay. If I'm running against the wall, this is the yeah. only vision I have to worry about. And you can only get to one side of you. Exactly. What side of the wall do I want to run on? Right to the right. The yeah, other left. Yes. Okay. Right to the left. Yeah, if you can grab you, you're right on. Uh, uh, who runs here? Only when chased. Okay. Good job, You wouldn't want to You wouldn't want to run on the right side because even if they grab you with the right arm, they're going to be grabbing you in a manner that has the right wrist, hand, arm in a very weak position. Mm. You're you're probably going to pick either wall depending yeah. where you want to go, but you do want to hug a wall. Um, I have Aaron chasing me, and I'm running. Okay. I turn and fight him. Use the wall. Do, do you see anything wrong with that turn? Yeah, you can turn yeah. the wall. Oh, oh, I, we experimented in our alley, and I went. Yeah, I pushed. Yeah. I'm going to turn to the open side and put him in. Put him in the wall. You do spinning, that's why we're practicing, spinning turns. Okay. So you can pick two partners, come down, slow motion. Person who is being thrown, put your hands down. Mm -hmm. This is the speed. One, two, three. Okay. 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 Speed over. Okay. Because he's got continuous momentum. You've got to stop and change your momentum. He's going to win every time. Okay. Basically roundhouse, right? Unless he stops, turns around, and does a forward roll right at his ankles. Mm -hmm. Okay. Gets in the knee like a bowling ball. Heel hook. Heel hook. 
Chris and Dave. I have a, probably a 220 pound heavy bag in my backyard. I took it and swung it. I wouldn't even try <laughs> punching it with my hook. You're right. You're right. You're right. A couple of things found that it works. This kind of works. Clothesline. It still might spin you around. It's going to stay. But and you want to make sure you don't get it so you hyperextend your elbow in the process. Right. Okay. But that's something you have to drill and work on. Okay. This really low. Bracing my arm and elbow works on a 220 pound bag swinging full force. Mm. <clears throat> Putting my, like uh, Marco said, pushing my back leg into it. And we were thinking when we were kind of messing around with this, come on, fall in now. Yeah. 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 Try this. Okay. You can try this. That's it. Yeah. But think of your. And you, and you gotta make sure you're protecting your head so your neck doesn't take the brunt of all that. Yeah, right. 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 yeah, yeah. they will just rack you. I, I do this. Yeah, you got to have the extra support. Extra support. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you probably have two teams. Let's come, come out. Yeah, you might not know how heavy it is and you're compensating. So you're tipping it versus picking it up. And you go to the left, you're, yeah. it, you're actually pulling it in front of you. Okay, I found this working in the alley, too. Why not? I spent a lot of time in the alley. Right? I don't let him in the house. He's been doing his research. <laughs> he goes, honey, go back to the alley. Let the dog chase you. <laughs> I found when I threw the can this way, it always went at an angle out. And didn't serve as a block. But when I'm, when I'm, I'm full run. Mm. I could, it's really hard to get that can to go get that arc. directly behind me. When I turn this way, mm. it went in a straight line. Interesting. To, to my attacker. Now it could be, and you, know, you could probably experiment, but this is what I found. And I don't no, know. I did an experiment with. Department of Sanitation charged you for the trash cans. <laughs> I used my little one. I, Not yet, but we're in the So you can always grab something, throw it. I prefer to throw it uh, against the wall behind me. Mm -hmm. um, you have to watch your force because, like you said, you might fling it, might be heavy, throw yourself in the wall. Okay, I shelled the one where you slam them into the wall. No, I shelled this one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I shelled this one where you come into the wall. Okay. What I want to do, strong side to it, I want to go low push. Remember that these strikes against the head? Crack here. I just don't have to push too much. Just, just block his, his center. Hook the arm into the wall. And so I push, hook, throw. That should take no more than two or three seconds. See you again? Yes. You see what you do. I came in, I side step, came in low, block, pushed up. Okay, so you're not even worried about his arm there, you just move in. I'm just moving, moving his. It's easy, okay, we know about the planes of spinning people, you could spin them from here or from the hips. Mm -hmm. I'm doing it, I'm using two planes, I'm using the shoulder and the hip plane. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's kind of like giving a little spin, push him, he's arched back, You're taking his balance, remember, mm -hmm. take the balance, remember something, and then give him a little pain, <laughs> okay, I hook it from here, <clears throat> here, and this 
friends are probably pissed because I probably injured them really good face kissing the wall. Mm -hmm. May I? I like them to go by the wall. Okay. 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 Push. I'm going to do the same you know, side slide step. Push. I'm going to hook his foot. Here. I'm going to go at a 45 degree angle. Out. And that makes it. It's more like a chip shot. Cheek. Exactly. <laughs> okay. But I'm not going to be able to go without upsetting his position. I need him to give a little step forward. And I make that sweep. That's my first, mm. first lunge. Just launch yourself out there, yeah. And they're like, hey, mommy, why did you fall? <laughs> <laughs> so you're just going to leap it forward with it. I'm oh, hooking, hooking this way. Okay. okay, first. But you're traveling forward with it. First, I take him this way. Hook. Out. I'm going to go out and then come in. Because you're going to be making that 45 degree angle out. It will not work. Okay, so here. It will not work this way. Okay, it's got to be that way. Yeah, so you're saying that kind of towards their little toe? Yes, yeah, it's like the, where the, the pinky is. Yeah. First, I want to upset its position. Okay. Now, what's happened is he's put more weight on his forward leg. I come in, I kick 45. Yeah. And what was the position you said it's not this? Um, I'm not going to go straight. You come at the ankle through 90 degrees, you're actually going against a huge sheet of tendon. You yeah. won't go. So it'll probably actually make them more set than this base. That way. It also works this way for a sweep. <laughs> I've been staring at you doing the technique, but I haven't been watching Aaron how he protects himself as UK. How, how is your... What's I spawned it off. Okay, I don't know. It looks like a, like a bad <laughs> Sometimes you end up like they're all stretched out. Yeah. Now, you know what they... Are thrilled or baton. And how do you know that? <laughs> You take him out, out, you take him out for a beer. A <laughs> Usually it says stop. Yeah. Stop. Okay. Or I'll hit you with this no. really heavy thing. Okay, I, I don't think anyone will do it, but yeah, they do. cops are trained to chase people. They will catch you. And you turn around and you go, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> They're not going to think it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to say, but when we see it on cops, we think it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Those guys get beat. Yeah. The cops don't yeah. like people yeah. running yeah. away. Once, once you run away from an officer, they assume that their the risk level has gone up for them significantly. So they're, they're entitled to use a significantly higher level of force than yeah. you use. They will um, and they will pull you down, and they will cuff you, and they will not be nice. And then they'll sit you up, and then they'll then you can start talking about it, maybe. Okay? Through your bloody teeth. <laughs> <laughs> you Starbucks. You don't want to just go, cops! <laughs> 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 you can't always walk where I live, because all the sheriff. In an alley, you're going to be park. in a room, yeah. where, wherever it is. Um, there may be some confinement around. If you're in a wide open space, um, then yeah, you pick what you feel is the weakest weakest link, uh, and you go straight through. The last thing you want to do is to sit her in a circle. Uh, just, no, just just two is just two is fine. But we're we're say we're surrounded here. The last thing I want to do is try to go between, because as soon as I make a move to go in between, they're going to they're both going to close on me, and now I've got two. I got two on one. Okay. So I'm going to have to pick pick one and go through him. All right? And he's probably going to stand there dumbfounded while he's saying, well, what's going on? I'm just going to, I'm going to go right through him, kick, right, and go right through. 
But that's if you're in an open area. If you're in a somewhat closed area, then you can't pick the weakest person. You've got to you've got to decide where's my exit. So if I'm surrounded, but I know my only exit is that door. So you know this may be the weakest link, but I got to go there. I can't go here and then sneak around all the other ones <laughs> and go out the door. So I got to go. I, I can't worry about. It. I got to go. I got to go through the guy. I got to go through the guy that's in front of my exit. Okay, so I, I don't care about the other ones. That's my exit, that's where I want to go. So this is the only guy that's stopping me from there. So, um, okay, and so, um, yeah, you're gonna pick one guy to go through, but you, you gotta be smart about the guy you're picking. If, if, you're, if you only have one exit from that place, then that's the guy you gotta go through. Mm -hmm.